Good morning. It's so good to see you. I can't thank Paul and for that wonderful uh, French horn piece. It's, it was beautiful. Thank you, Paul. On behalf of this congregation, I welcome you to Newman Church, a community gathered on this site well over 350 years ago. If you are a visitor, please know that wherever you are in your life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us know more about you, either by identifying yourself to an usher or a greeter, or to me, or by filling out the form in your pews. For those who don't know me, I'm the Reverend Nancy Sokup, and I'm a member of this church, and I'm leading the worship today on behalf of our interim minister, the Reverend Bruce McLeod, who's taking a week off, a well-deserved week off. Friends, we have a number of announcements and mission moments today, but before we start, I want you to note that this is the first Sunday of Epiphany, and traditionally it is known as Baptismal Sunday. Now, today we don't have any babies to be baptized, nor it seems do we have any adults who are coming forward, so I wondered if we could use this time to reaffirm our own baptismal vows, which we'll do later in the service. I just didn't want you to be surprised and think, what is she doing? So be prepared. You're going to be asked to stand up. Uh, and I hope that after you do these vows, when you stand up, uh, that you each make a personal statement of your own. You can do that either silently or aloud. I'll tell you how we're going to do it. But before we start, we have several important uh, mission moments and announcements for the community, and I would like to first introduce Danielle Dunn, who is going to tell us about a blood drive that we're going to be holding. Danielle. Good morning, and thank you so much for, thank, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. Um, I've worked with Newman Congregational Church for many years, and you host regular blood drives, which um, are so important to the community. So I just wanted to thank all of you who are donors. Our next blood drive is this Tuesday. And just in here, really, just to ask you um, to come on out and donate. Um, it's this Tuesday from 4 to 8. Um, every single time that you donate, you are helping three different people. Um, we need up to 280 volunteers every single day to donate blood to keep our Rhode Island hospital supplied with the blood that they need. So it's a great community service. Um, it's not for everybody, obviously, but only about 5% of people donate. We wish that it was more. Um, you know, I wouldn't have to be here maybe, you know, t talking about it, but um, it's a community service that you're, you're really, you're giving part of yourself to help someone in need. Um, a blood recipient is someone, you know, in a hospital who's very sick. Um, and, you know, the amazing thing about donating blood is that that person is always relying on the kindness of a stranger. They need somebody who's donated up to two days prior to that. Um, and believe me, they are so thankful and gracious for your donations. Um, many people think they, they're not allowed to donate. Um, many of us adults will self-defer. Um, I'm gonna be here at coffee hour, so if you have any specific questions about donating um, to see if you're eligible, please stop by and, and speak with me. The most important thing to have a good donation is to be hydrated. Um, eat a good breakfast, a good lunch, um, and to hydrate. Um, so I hope to see you um, after service as well as um, on Tuesday. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Danielle. And please do ask her questions if you're not certain about whether or not you can donate. I'd now like to invite Nancy Batty to come up and say a word about upcoming, um, an upcoming meeting. I'm going to call you too, Malcolm. <coughs> Members of Newman Congregational Church are hereby notified that there will be a special meeting on January 27, 2013, to act upon the resignation of the Reverend Sharon Key as Associate Minister. Thank you for that, that notification. Uh, for those who did not know, Sharon has, um, 
has sadly, uh, after three years, decided to uh, resign. She, as, as many of you know, has had a long, tough year with uh, several deaths in her family and truly has become the matriarch, as I say, of her clan and has had many responsibilities. So we continue to hold her in prayer and give thanksgiving for her ministry here with us and look forward to a time when we are going to uh, wish her well and we will announce that soon, I hope. Malcolm. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Malcolm. Uh, well, I'm the chair of the Deacons Committee, and we are going to be forming what is called a visitation team. This team is going to be uh, put together to kind of visit people in Newman uh, that can't get out to kind of show them that there's still people out there that care for them, uh, and to tell them what's going on in the church and so forth. We're going to have a, a quick meeting next Sunday. Uh, it's in your bulletin, 1045 in the chapel for anybody that is interested. It's strictly going to be going out, meeting with people, talking with people. Uh, we'll give you more details and all that stuff next week. So I hope to see everybody there. Thank you. Thanks to all three of you. Are there any other announcements we may have missed? Please don't hesitate to stand up. Any other? Oh, please, yeah. Good morning. Thanks, Scott. That's great. Please join me in a Quaker moment of silence before we begin our call to worship. As we prepare for God's word, please join me in the responsive call. Sisters and brothers, today we recall Jesus came to the waters of baptism. In baptism, we are joined to Christ and we are joined together in unity, recalling there is no In baptism, the Spirit of God anoints us for ministry and makes us signs of divine love. It is the mark of acceptance into the church and the beginning of our growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Let us worship God. And let us stand and worship God by singing, In Christ There Is No East or West, in the New Century Hymnal number 394.
great start. Please be seated. That's, that's one of my favorite hymns. Would the youngest among us please join me down here in front and anyone else who'd like to? Check it out. Jeff. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm Nancy. You would know me if I had a red, red choir robe on, wouldn't you? And I'd look a little more familiar. How many of you sing in the choir? Well, we got to get some more here. All right. Well, today, I said something at the beginning of the service that this is a special Sunday in Epiphany. Does anybody remember what we remember today? What do we remember today? What? What happened to Jesus today? Every year we celebrate it. We fast forward. What? Yes, yes, say that again. He was baptized. He was baptized. Do you know where he was baptized? Some river, yeah. That's why we have a flotation device here. Yeah, yeah. Now wait a second. Is that were you guys baptized? Was anybody baptized in a river here? No. Do you remember your baptisms? You do remember? What happened? I was put in water. You were put in water. They went like this. They sprinkled water on you, but they didn't dunk you like the duck, did they? No. Was anybody here dunked? Anybody a Baptist? All right, look around, turn around, look, look, show them your hands. Some of you were, a, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now we'll have to get stories about that, won't we? Because the Baptists, you know, some, some, maybe some of your parents or grandparents were Baptists. My mother was a Baptist. She was a Southern Baptist. She was dunked. They decide later on in life when they want to be baptized like Jesus. Now, so, Jesus, Jesus didn't have a little water sprinkled on his head, did he? What, 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 what? He got dunked. He went, he went right into the water. Do you think he had a flotation device like the duck here? No. Why am I wearing the duck? Do you know why? Because when you go in the water, I want you to be safe. So. I know, so always have your flotation device. But, right? No, no, but Jesus, Jesus, you know, Jesus was actually Jewish. Did you know that? You didn't? Jesus was Jewish. And there was a rite that they did. And instead of being baptized as babies, they used the immersion in water, going into the water and getting wet all the way up for a different reason. You may not know why. Because the Jewish community in Israel at that time, they believed that you had to have a bath or you had to be immersed in water to be purified of sins and also before you went to worship. Now what would happen if we had a big bathtub out there in the front? Do you think it would happen? What happens if we made you all stop at the river cross the way here and take a little dunk in before you came to church. Well, for, for Christians, baptism became to mean something else. And what does baptism mean? Anybody got an idea? When you're born like on the body of Christ? Yes, yes. It's called, when you're born, well, no it's not? You disagree? Oh, there are, hold on to that, buddy. Don't give up that idea. What else? What other, what, what is baptism? Anybody else? Uh-oh, you're, you're taking it back. It's when, now it's when somebody is new to the church. That's right. You both have the same idea. Very good. It's when you are welcomed into the church. And in our church, who does that for you? 
Did John the ba does John the Baptist do it? Some crazy guy standing there with his loincloth on? Go, ah, there's someone else coming. That's not me. Who does it for you? Who, who stands with you? The minister? No, the duck? The mom and dad. And who else? Uh, 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 the minister does, that's right. Someone like me wearing a black robe and a duck. <laughs> Your godparents. You have people make that promise for you. And then we all say, yes, we, we want you with us and we're going to look after you. And then when you're confirmed, you make that choice for yourself. So you never actually have to take a, a dunk in the river, okay? But, so two things to take away. We, we do our baptisms differently in our church, right? And second of all, I want you to always be safe in water and have a flotation device whenever you go in the water, okay? I'm going to keep my duck, all right? Think of a name for him later on, okay? Oh, what's his name? Mr. Quackles, that's what we'll call him. Mr. Quackles, that's who we'll call him. Mr. Quackles will keep us safe. You all are fabulous. You may now retire to your Sunday school rooms. We thank you for everything you've taught us today. And thanks for naming my duck. You're welcome. Oh, God, life is good. They're so good. They're the best in the world. We now come to a time when we gather for prayer as we prepare for the ministry of music and the ministry of the word. And before we go into prayer, I wanted to see if there was anyone you wanted to lift up in prayer for us today. Please feel free to raise your hand, stand up. Joan, Joey, okay. I'm writing, I'm getting all these. This is great. Thank you. I ask your prayers for my friend Peggy. Thank you. Thank you for those offerings of people of love and care. Gracious God, we confess that too often we live as though we are fearful and not faithful. When we encounter the waters of chaos and confusion, we don't easily pass through them. But we obsess about the height of the water instead of the sight of the other side. You promised to walk through the rivers with us. Help us believe and help our disbelief. Today we ask for people we love, for whom there is need of healing or spiritual uplifting. We pray especially for Sharon Key. We pray for Jeff and Peggy and John we pray for Jessica Frackleton. She's having some 
problems with her pregnancy and needs our prayers. We pray for Sally and Sydney and for Richard Coffin, for Alicia, for the Richardson family and for Sue Gorman, for Dave Schumacher, for Anne, for Steve, for Joey and Ernie Wilson, for Cindy and Ruth, and Chris McKintrick and Heidi, for Lauren. We pray also for Suzanne Swanson, who is on another mission trip to Haiti. For all others in need of our love and care. And we pray, gracious God, for the leadership of this church during its time of interim ministry, for Bruce, for our search committee, for our council, for our trustees, and especially for our board of deacons, that they may be inspired to move forward with love and excitement for what lies ahead for us in the coming years. We also give thanks for those we honor today with the flowers on the table and the organ, Arthur Brindell and Bunty and Jack Browning and Alicia Wilson. We thank you for those gifts of love in the form of nature. Thus says the God who created you and formed you in God's image. And God said, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. This is the good news. We belong to God and are surrounded by God's love forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>